Hello and welcome to another vibrant edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Today's vibrant programme is packed full of practical information and demonstrations to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So switch on your creativity and settle back for 60 minutes of the latest tips, tricks and techniques from some of the most popular leading artists. Let's get started and take a quick look at what's on today's artistic palette. We'll be joining our resident bookworm, Henry Moult, as he delves into the SAA library to cast his critical eye over another inspirational artist book. Our own out and about presenter and artist, Fraser Scarf, will be getting interactive with Atelier Acrylics. SAA professional watercolour artist and tutor, Louise Bogard, will be dropping in to demonstrate her lively and loose style in today's Try Your Hand Up project. We'll be introducing SAA professional artist and tutor Heidi Jo Summers and discover her top tips for preparing your own oil and acrylic canvas boards. So let's dive straight in and join our resident bookworm Henry Malt as he delves into the SAA library to cast a critical eye over another artist book. Today's book is The Essence of Watercolour by Hazel Sohn. Now obviously Hazel is a very popular artist. What does this book show Hazel for the kind of artist she is? Is it a good example? What is it a tuition book? Hazel Stone is almost impossible to categorise. Yeah. All you can really do is say, this is a Hazel Stone book. Mm. And an awful lot of people will just go out and buy it because of that. Yeah. And they're absolutely right to, because yeah. she is an amazing artist. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. I was trying to work out, sometimes when you've got somebody who's really good and you really like, mm. It's very hard to work out why it is. Yeah. And I think the answer is that she is one of the best people around at painting light. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got a note here that says we've got pages 59 or 80, if we want to have a look at it. Look. Um, where she's actually using the light itself as a medium. If you look at that, that portrait, there are a lot of the gaps are filled in by light rather than just by colour. It's, it's like a backlit effect, isn't it, which is very difficult to achieve. And it's almost the, the kind of negative style of work as well, which makes the light work really well. And she's used granulation mm. yeah. tremendously. There. Nice rough paper and a nice heavy pigment, yeah. Mm. I mean, it really is. It's a fantastic style of painting, it really is. And page 80. Page 80, I said yes. There we go. That was, I, again, we seem to have got another figure, but you can see in that one how there are actual gaps. I mean, we're almost talking negative shapes, in fact, aren't we? Yeah, and it's captured that early morning stroke, evening, warm light that people want to do. That's the best time to photograph. It's the best time to paint because warm colours, and this is probably just white paper that's given that effect, but that's the real skill with this one. Does the book actually go into how to achieve that or not? Is it the wrong book for she, that? Well, she does explain it. Hazel is not, again, is not one of those people on the whole who does demonstrations. Yeah. She's more one of the deconstructionists. So yeah, it's okay. the how I did it style of okay, painting. Right, fair enough. And yeah. she talks a lot about light. Yeah. And in practice, you almost don't need it. I think you look at her paintings and yeah. I think the secret is that you can actually see what it was yeah. she was doing. I mean, I didn't need someone to say to me, that's light as a medium. Yeah. It just, oh look, my goodness, she's using light as a medium. I mean, again, we've, here we've got wild dogs against a non-specific background and it's they're almost the coming out coming of the mist again, again yeah. and she's done yeah. that. Very atmospheric. What kind of... Uh, what kind of artist, level of artist, would buy this book? Would it be beginner, advanced, intermediate, or just anybody who's interested? I think probably everybody would. Yeah. It's what I, I suspect that she has that aspirational style. Mm. It's all, I don't want to belittle by saying, you know, oh goodness, you're never going to be able to paint like that. Yeah. But I think you would just say, I would love to be able to paint like that, and yeah. I just want to look at it, and if something rubs off, then it's worth it. Magic. Well, thanks again, Henry, for another cracking review. We'll Thank see you, you soon.
So thumbs up for Hazel, their amazing use of light shines through in a fantastic style of painting. Sounds like the perfect addition for any artist reference library. Now it's time for a quick and easy bite-sized project designed to encourage you to try your hand at something new. Today, we welcome back our very own out and about presenter and professional artist Fraser Scarf as he shows us how to get interactive with Atelier Acrylics. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about Atelier Interactive Acrylics and why I love them so much. They haven't been on the market that long in the grand scheme of things, but I've been using them exclusively for about three or four years now and I get on great with them. Now, acrylic paint's a great medium, but anyone who's used it before will know one of the biggest problems with it is the drying time. Um, it's always the thing that holds people back because, of course, acrylics dry exceedingly quickly. Now sometimes that can be a benefit, but in most cases it can sort of hinder your painting because you often find yourself sort of up against the clock trying to finish a painting before certain areas dry out. So you're working on your sky, trying to get everything finished before lunch or the phone rings or something, and then you find if it has dried out and you need to go back, what you have to do is remix colours or try and paint over the top of things. So that's always held acrylic artists back somewhat. Now Atelier Interactive Acrylics are designed to combat that problem. So they do that in a number of ways. Now, firstly, you've got more time to work with them. So they dry slower from the off, which gives you more time to sort of spend on your paintings, more time to do blending, things like that. Secondly, the really great thing about these is that you can actually go back and get them to come to life again, even after the paint's dried. Now, I'll explain a bit about how that works. Unlike normal acrylics, which sort of dry to a solid plasticky feel, the interactive acrylics lose their moisture very gradually, which means over the course of a painting day, if you keep going back and rehydrating your paint by spraying it with water or applying some water on a brush, the paint will actually come to life again and you'll be able to carry on blending and carry on working with it. So as long as you keep applying moisture to these paints, you can go back and carry on painting. Now, what happens is that if you keep applying moisture, your paint will be workable. That happens for about a day or so. So as soon as you leave the paint without any moisture for a while, it will dry like a standard acrylic would. What you can then do, however, is go back to your painting and use something called an unlocking formula, which will actually allow you to go back a month down the line, a year down the line, and change a painting that's been completely dry for all that time. And you can use this neat or dilute it with water and spray it onto your picture in order to go back and carry on working. So it's the first time acrylic artists have really had that flexibility and it just gives you so much more freedom. You're not up against the clock, you're not rushing to get things done and you've always got the option of editing your paintings. Now just to show you what I'm talking about here, I've got a canvas here and earlier I painted a stripe of standard red acrylic paint onto here and a stripe of Atelier Interactive. Now what I'm going to do is just show you how you can go back into the interactive and bring it to life again by spraying it with water or using unlocking formula. So these are both touch dry. First thing you'll notice is the interactive acrylic is a lot thicker and it's a really nice paint to use. It's got a lovely sort of buttery consistency, very rich, a lot more like oil paint in fact. So it's great stuff to use. Now we've got our standard acrylic paint here. Now, as we know, acrylic paint dries very, very quickly. So if I spray this with water and just go in with a clean brush, I can't get any of that paint working really. There's a bit of moisture coming out around the edge, but generally speaking, once that's dry, it's dry. Now with my interactive acrylics, I should be able to get much more of a reaction by spraying with water here. So I'm just gonna go in and give that a good spray in with the same brush and what you'll see is that the interactive acrylic suddenly comes to life again. So by spraying with water you can lift all the paint back out from your interactive acrylic and depending on how much water you use you can sort of go in and make slight alterations or if you wanted to go back to the sort of canvas weave you could do that as well. So I'm spraying away here and I can really go into this paint and get all that colour to come to life again. And how you use that's up to you and your art. You know, you may want to edit an entire painting and change it completely, or you may just want to touch something up or do a bit of fine detail work by editing paint that's already dry. 
So just having this option with the interactive acrylic just makes your life a lot easier. So I've shown how you can go back with water and unlock this interactive acrylic. But what you can also do with this is go back months down the line and edit a painting that's completely bone dry. And the thing to do that with is this stuff here, which is the unlocking formula. So I'm just going to take some of this neat on a brush. Now, you can, of course, dilute this with water. It is quite a potent substance. Um, and essentially, it reacts with the paint um, and allows you to unlock in the same way as water. So what I'm going to do is go back with some of this unlocking formula. And the power of that unlocking formula is actually allowing me to go right back to the weave of the canvas. So this layer of paint that is completely dry before, I can now go back to and remove completely if I want to, just by applying a touch of that unlocking formula on my brush. And then of course you could use paper towel or something to just rub away at the paint there. So it's powerful stuff. So it gives you the option, if you want to change your painting that you've worked on months ago, you can always do that with Atelier Interactive. Thanks Fraser, it's easy to see why Atelier is perfect for unlocking your artistic freedom. Well folks, time for a short break now, but join us in part two when SAA professional watercolour artist and tutor Louise Bogard takes us on a tour of Dartmoor in today's Try Your Hand Up project. I'll see you soon.